A while ago I made a video that asks, who is the Steam Deck for? Steam Deck is for me, apparently. The thing that put me over the edge with this console was the ability to have all of my Steam library available on the go. Will I break this thing out on the subway? I don't think so, but I do think there are some games that play really well in the Steam Deck, and I know this list is gonna grow, so let's just get started with five games that I've been enjoying on the Steam Deck. And the first game I wanna talk to you about is a game I've had my eyes on for a while, and now I have a reason to talk about it. It's called Circuit Super stars. It's a racing game that features an array of gameplay modes that are good for both extended as well as short gameplay sessions. It's got a really charming art style and a high skill ceiling so it's easy to learn but difficult to master. If you take a turn too hard you can kiss your lap record goodbye but as soon as you learn how to do all these things the game becomes a lot more fun. Short play sessions aren't the only thing that makes Circuit Superstars worth buying for your Steam Deck. My favorite part of this game is the simple control scheme. All you need is the right trigger to go and the left trigger to stop and then you using your thumbstick to drive the car and direct it. That being said, I don't use the brake a lot in this game. Maybe if I have to go in reverse after a crash, I'll use the lack of gas to make a turn because that slows you down actually more effectively. You can also play this in longer sessions if you wanna try out endurance mode. These are 10 lap races, so they take a while to complete and you have to watch out for your gas going down and your tire health and your car's integrity as well. So you can't hit the wall too much, you can't take turns like an idiot, and you have to make sure you stop for a pit stop so you can fill your tank. And I know I said this is more ideal for a longer play session, but you can always put your Steam Deck into suspend mode and pick up your endurance race at a later time. And if you don't have a Steam Deck or a PC, then you can play this game on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. And like I said, this game is really good for portable play, so if you have another portable console, then I think you know where to go with that. It's the Switch. I'm telling you that if you have a Switch, you should buy it on the Switch. The second game on our list is a game called Dome Keeper, and if you recall, I talked about this game when I got back from PAX East 2022. There are two things that make this game really worth playing on the go. Actually three, but we'll get to the last one. It's sort of a bonus reason. The gameplay loop itself is pretty simple. You dig for resources and you bring them back up to your dome, choose upgrades, and eventually you'll be attacked by a wave of aliens. They don't seem too pleased about this dome being smack in the middle of their planet, and I kind of get it. Upon entry, we sort of crushed one of their buddies, so yeah, they probably want payback and they want this thing to get out of here. Without getting too in-depth on the controls, they're very simple for Dome Keeper, so it's really good for on-the-go play. I really value that in a handheld game. I think it's very important to have a game that doesn't really hurt to play or make you do crazy acrobatics with your thumbs and Dome Keeper doesn't do that. So the controls are really straightforward and the gameplay loop is as well. Now the third bonus reason that this game is really good for Steam Deck is that it's only about 800 megabytes at the time of this recording. I don't know if they're gonna add some super mega ultra pack that adds a bunch of cool stuff but I don't think it's gonna get much bigger than one gigabyte. And I know you can get bigger storage on your Steam Deck but maybe you didn't want to buy that one. Maybe you don't want to have a lot of big games on your Steam Deck and this game fits right in around the bigger ones. I don't see myself deleting it. It's probably gonna be a permanent resident on my Steam Deck because of all the things I said and also because of how small it is. The next game on this list is called Curse to Golf. First off, I just wanna thank Chu High Labs for giving me a key to this game. I've had a great time with it and now I'm excited to tell you about it. Anyway, Curse to Golf itself is a game about escaping purgatory by winning a golf tournament. It's almost like a golf inspired platformer, but it is definitely more of a golf game than it is a platformer. And that is simply because you don't control the golfer outside of golfing but you are trying to get the ball from platform to platform to eventually bring it to its goal, which is a hole. I just realized that I've been holding the Steam Deck like this the whole time and it's a two-handed console, so grabbing it like it's a basketball or something is killing my hands. So I'm just gonna put it down over here. And you'll play 18 holes of golf across a few worlds that have different themes. Each world is also characterized by a look and a feel, as well as specific hazards that are found only in that world. So it's an interesting way to change things up on top of the already procedurally generated golf courses. Curse to Golf does have a decent learning curve. You really have to learn more about what to do in certain situations. It's simple to hit a golf ball and decide which club to use. That's not a big deal. It's more so about which card should I use in this scenario? How can I best get through this without using all of my swings and starting back at the beginning? But once you have a handle on how the spell cards work, when to use them, things start moving a little faster and a lot more fun. I found myself clearing some of the more difficult courses in about five minutes. I think 10 minutes was the most and that's because I spent a lot of time thinking. All of that being said, the concept of golfing through a level is simple enough and each one presents a challenge that keeps it engaging. This game is also available on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Xbox Series S. So if you don't have a Steam Deck or a PC, you can play Curse to Golf. And you should, it's a fun game. At this point, I think it's obvious that simplicity is at the core of the games 
I'm suggesting that you play on Steam Deck. And I have to say, it doesn't get much more simple than it does in Disc Room. The objective of this game, the entire goal, is to survive as long as you can in a room of spinning spikes. That's it, you just gotta survive. And how long you survive is often the metric by which you move forward. A lot of weird, small objectives that make this a really fun game to play in bite-sized doses. And this isn't to say the game isn't complex. You'll unlock more abilities as you play it. More things will become available to you. There are boss fights, even though you don't have really any attacks. You have defenses and skills. I found it extremely interesting to see the ways in which this game grew more complex as I played it, but still maintain that precision simplicity that is don't get killed by spikes. So if you've got 15 minutes of time to play this game, that's a lot of disc room. It takes seconds for a singular room to be either won or lost. Either way, you'll make progress because also dying against multiple spike types is another way that you move forward in this game. Disc room is also available on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Cloud Gaming and Amazon Luna. The last game on this list is probably the most unique game I've played in a long time. Which is ironic to say out loud because one of the main aspects of this game is chess. Anyway, this game is called Shotgun King The Final Checkmate, which is easily one of the coolest titles I've had the honor of saying out loud on YouTube. So you play as a singular king piece. The twist is that this king happens to own and use a shotgun. Literally a shooter inspired chess game. I've played chess maybe once in my life and I didn't do that well. Last time I played, I played against a six-year-old and she kicked my butt. I didn't learn it at a young age and now I'm old and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep learning it every time I play it. But Shotgun King might give me the edge I need to learn chess because of its bizarre nature. And you're playing against a set of other chess pieces who are not alone. They have an entire squad to take you out. So while you're avoiding being attacked by every piece as per the rules of chess, you're trying to get within shooting range so you can literally shoot them and take them out. I just found it interesting because I felt myself learning actual chess strategies to avoid the pawn or the rook or even the queen and the knights, all these pieces that were coming for me as I was playing this ridiculous game where I'm using a shotgun to shoot a pawn or a rook. The story mode in Shotgun King is such that you're clearing boards and boards of chess games. Different configurations of the enemy, but you're always the Shotgun King. And every time you clear a board, you choose a perk, which is great, but you also choose a perk for your enemy. So no matter how it goes, every level you improve and the enemy improves as well, which is a really interesting thing to have to balance as you build out your Shotgun King. Another interesting twist that Shotgun King brings to chess, besides bringing a shotgun to a chess table, is that you can inhabit the souls of other chess pieces. So if you kill a knight, for example, you now have the ability to call upon its soul and then move like a knight for one turn. Now, when it comes to controlling this on the Steam Deck, let me get the deck. <coughs> Just kidding, it's not that heavy. You'll have this mouse pad situation to use and that's your thumb and then you use the trigger to click. You can also click in to this. It's, it's not really, I don't think it's gonna do it right now because it's off, but the controls for this are a lot more akin to a mouse. You can use the thumbstick as well if you wanna use that as your mouse and you can use your right trigger again to click. I think you can use the touch screen for Shotgun King as well. And you can play this game on Steam. I think it's worth every cent, especially if you like chess. I don't like chess and I enjoyed this game a lot. So if that tells you anything, then there you go. And those are five games that I've been enjoying very much on the Steam Deck. All of these games are good. I really enjoy Circus Superstars. I see myself picking that up a lot. I'm finding myself getting more and more handheld devices. I just bought a Retroid Pocket 3 and I'm gonna set that up soon. If you wanna hear more about the handheld gaming consoles that I have, let me know in the comments. Make sure you like the video. That's a good way to indicate an enjoyment of the video style that I'm doing right now. We're always gonna talk about fun games to play here. So if that's something you like, make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you've played any of these games, let me know in the comments. I wanna talk about them. I hope you have a great day. Uh, happy gaming and all that cool stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video.